My life changed in 1962 when Westwood was created and I began my education, really, career. When we first created this school in 62, and I was able to run for student body president and become the first student body president. And uh, the following three years before our graduation, we did remarkable things that put Westwood on the map. We won state championships in football and in track, academics, all the things that give life meaning in our lives. I loved the fight song. And uh, that was a contribution that our class was able to do because we had no fight song. But I love that fight song. I hear it, it brings back power, it brings back chills and a tear or two uh, just to hear that. We coaches, both the, the basketball and the football coaches, uh, wanted one bright color to, in, in order to, you know, to, through the side of their eye, the periphery, they could recognize a bright color. And uh, we wanted, so we, we decided, hey, we want uh, blue and bright orange. The students voted on the colors. And we pulled a little shenanigan. Uh, we were, uh, had a, a game that afternoon, a junior varsity game. And, and so we put orange and blue strips on the on the uh, white helmets, and the the assembly was in progress. And we to run down to what is now Carson, we had the boys go right down through the middle of the uh, assembly, and 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 on down, and, and well anyway, orange and blue stuck. Westwood, and then Warriors. The, the WW, uh, it, it seemed to fit. I can't tell you the year, but probably about 1967, could have been before that, could have been 66. Um, our basketball team, we had, we had finished like second to last in the league, I think my first year here. And our idea was we're gonna get better every time. And so our point was we were, to, we were going to move up in the standings and we were going to move up as individuals, as players. And so we started using that logo with our basketball team. And then one day we came in the gym, and again, I don't remember what year, and the cheerleaders had made this big arrow that went almost to the ceiling and it had move up written on it. And it was, uh, uh, it was, it was a blue and orange sign and it stayed up there. It was made out of butcher paper and it stayed up the whole season and uh, came down at the end of the season and the next year they put up another one. And each year the cheerleaders would put that up there and then uh, must have been early 70s, one of the classes donated the neon sign that we have now that has flashing lights and all, but we weren't flashing lights at the beginning. We were just a butcher paper move up sign and with quite a bit of commitment to getting better. Well, actually, it's, it started uh, back in 1937 when I was a, a, a freshman at Occidental College in Los Angeles. And uh, uh, they had a, a deal that they would holler war eagle, eat them up tigers. We were the Occidental Tigers, well they still are. Uh, so I stole it from what uh, I, I witnessed uh, when I was in college. Well it was, uh, it had been 65, 66, 67, I'm not sure. I'm dang near 91, I, things are <laughs> slipping my mind. But uh, they, uh, uh, we evidently had lost the, a game and, uh, and things were sagging a little bit. And so th that's when I decided to go over there and, and teach these kids in the cafeteria the old War Eagle chant. And uh, evidently it worked because they're still using it. 
stuff. So I did, and they did, and I guess they still do. 